Hello, my dear internet friends. Clancy has been out for officially over one month, so how are we feeling? I was debating whether or not to post something now or if I should wait until something else came out, but I see you guys, so we're just gonna, we're gonna do this now, and if something else comes out, then we'll fill in again. Ask and you shall receive, right? So this video is going to be summarizing everything that's happened since the release of Clancy the last time that we spoke. So I guess we'd better just start right back at that point, May 24th, when the album was released. Also, hello, if you're new here, if you haven't seen my face before, if you don't know what we're talking about, welcome to the channel, welcome to the video, welcome to the 21 Pilots lore. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch my last couple of videos. If you do know what I'm talking about, Let's get into it. May 24th, 2024, Clancy release day. <laughs> At midnight, EST, the band hosted a live stream where they premiered all of the music videos for all of the songs because they were putting out one music video for each song. Of course, that is with the exception of one because during the live stream they announced that the last song is actually not going to get a music video at that point. They were waiting just a little bit longer, but they said early June it's gonna come out. And when you watch these videos, there's one thing that really stood out to a lot of people and it's that in the title screen on all of their other music videos it says from the full length album Skeldon I See or whatever other album it is. From the full length album, but in all of these it just says from the album Clancy. So it's not full, it's not complete, there's still a little bit more maybe. And even though they had initially pushed back the album release date from May 17th to the 24th with the excuse of needing more time for the music videos, they still weren't putting out one of them and when you listen to the song you find out that it ends on quite a cliffhanger. Before they premiered the final song on the album, Tyler asks does this does sound, sound like, like the, the end? end, which strongly suggests that it isn't. Yep. And when you listen to it, it very much confirms that because when you get to the end of the song, there's roughly a minute of silence that just has bird noises, there's no music, and then you get lyrics that seem to be quite literally narrating something that's playing out, and then it cuts off, there's a door noise, and then Blurry Face speaks directly to Clancy. He says, so few, so proud, so emotional, hello Clancy, and then the music cuts off, and that's the end of the song. So obviously that doesn't sound like the end, that sounds like they've just come face to face, it's only just happening. I'm kind of giving a brief summary just so we're all on the same page of like what that initial premiere was, and the promise of early June for some sort of resolution for it with the music video. And he says this in the placeholder video, the actual video, and also the live stream. They say early June this is going to be released. And on the same day that the album was released, they also had a physical exhibition in Ohio, which I did say in the last video that that was in London, but that's because they were doing a pop-up shop in London and I just got the two confused. But in Ohio, they had an exhibition which you're not allowed to take pictures or videos, but people had tweeted that they were unscrambling a puzzle that led to something that translated from Latin to say Clancy Ultimate Chapter 25. I don't really know for sure if the exact translation is ultimate or last or final, I've seen people use all three, but regardless, it's hinting that there is something more. There's something final, there's something that's going to actually resolve this that isn't just Clancy. And people, of course, were jumping all over this and saying it has to be confirmation of a double or a deluxe album or something like that, which had already been a theory floating around. And there are lots of theories that sprouted from specifically the number 25, Clancy Ultimate Chapter 25, but what does that number mean? For one thing, if we go 25 days forward from that date, May 24th, it was June 18th, which happens to be Josh's birthday. Back when the Clancy letters had first started, June 18th was kind of a big date. But the number 25 could also be referencing a specific date like June 25th, or maybe even 2025. June 25th would also make sense within the pilot's lore because June 25th, 2017 is the end of the Blurry Face era. That's when Tyler washed off the black paint. That was the end of the concert that was when they fully just moved on from that album so it makes sense that now we're getting up onto an anniversary and they're gonna post something on the same day. And also if you listen to one of the songs in Snapback they say fooled you once it's been 25 times that number is coming up again. When that album came out Josh posted some stats from a run that he had done but it was 6.25 miles. Again we're seeing June 25th there's also a tweet that Tyler had put out back when Overcompensate came out that said a bunch of random letters. In the tweet, it doesn't have the verification, but I've seen so many people talk about it as if it's 100% a real thing, so I have to assume that it is but I don't know why it doesn't have the verification mark. So I'm saying it in here because I've seen everybody else talk about it, but it just doesn't- I don't know. I get a weird vibe from that tweet. But he tweets out these random letters and then says, come on guys, this is nothing, I would be straightforward with you. Which we obviously know is not the case, but people are looking at these letters and thinking, what if this is a hint for what the rest of the songs are going to be? Because if we're including both versions of The Craving, there are 14 songs right now. 
and he tweeted out 11 random letters 14 plus 11 again 25 25 songs on the full album and there's some more that people are using to back up this theory that we'll get to a little bit later on but right now these are all just kind of hopeful theories that are floating around there's nothing that's super confirmed i don't think anybody has a solid answer on what any of this means a couple days later on may 29th the band releases digital remains which was a limited time sale of a digital photo album with content from clancy so it has 121 pages of behind the scenes images from music videos promotional content and unreleased lyrics from different songs and people are obviously going to dig out what they can from that as well because why would you just release something like that without it meaning something i bought it and enjoyed it just because it was a glimpse into their creative process you can see him writing the lyrics out on the page and that just feels so intimate and so special i love that more human aspect of knowing that somebody had to sit down and write out the lyrics but some pages that stood out one was page 65 which has a song called drag path and that is one of the things that strengthened the whole theory about those random letters being songs from the album because one of the random letters was a d and this song is drag path there's also on page 19 a song with the name silver weighted sun and there was an s in the random letter so maybe those are two unreleased songs and then along with that whole idea of the random letters being the rest of the song titles there was one page in particular that caught people's attention it's page 119 of the digital remains which again Clancy Ultimate Chapter 25. And we see that number all throughout the digital remains. On slides 22 and 101, they have the numbers 120 minus 95, which obviously equals 25. That's also in the bottom of slide 23 in the bottom corner. And there are images that seem to continue a story even though we don't know how or why. Like slide 14 shows Dima standing and whole, but 92 shows that same city now on fire. As people are seeing 25 in the content, they start to see it more in what the band is doing outside of their official 21 Pilots stuff. Tyler tweeted out a celebratory gift to promote the digital remains, and if you look close, it was posted at 7.25. I guess we're disregarding the 7 there and just focusing on the 25. What if it also means July 25th? And that is the one clue that we get that tells us that. And then on the same day, Tyler also tweets out, I'm a dashes in the streets in a room full of pardon my delays, which is 14 words, 48 letters. There are 14 songs on the album and it's 48 minutes long. Josh responds, it's tough to find good company, which happens to be six words and 25 letters. You can see how it's very easy to go overboard with this type of thing, how to go all in, get way out of hand, but who knows? Anything could be something, so you have to try and catch every little detail in hopes that maybe you're the one that unlocks it. On May 31st, Tyler tweets out to address people that are disappointed in the performance of the album because maybe it's not the most top-ranking thing of all time. And at the end of the post, he says this is just the beginning of bringing this record to life, which obviously if this is just the beginning, it could be referencing that the music video is going to come out and they're going to be able to promote it more. It could be talking about the fact that they still have to go on tour for it, or it could mean that there is more to the album. And also, I don't know if I mentioned it, but the red tape that had been on all the other album covers of the Eyes of the Dead People, that all is gone now. So, early June, right? We all know what June is, and we all know what early would mean. It would probably mean within the first 10, 14 days of the month. At that point, you're entering the later half, and it's not early June anymore. So you can imagine people's frustration when it's June 11th, and there's still nothing from the band. Tyler was reposting some fan art on his personal Twitter, and the 21 Pilots accounts were posting highlights from each of the music videos every couple of days, but that was kind of it. Theories started to get a little bit more desperate. You had people layering old songs on top of new music videos and then going back all the way to try and figure out the deepest parts of this story, bringing up songs like Trapdoor, A Car Torch, A Death, March to the Sea, because like we keep talking about, all of these songs have themes that can go through pretty much all of their music. You could die together if you want to, and that doesn't mean that all of those old songs are completely relevant to the lore now, but there are people saying, what if this new album is just those songs redone? <laughs> Everybody's getting desperate because they promised us early June and that had come and gone. There's also this whole bigger theory about the Borbaki group and specifically about Simone Vell, who is the sister of Andre, who is one of the founders and also one of the names of the bishops. I'm not even gonna get into that, but if you are interested in that theory, because I think it's really interesting and I think it does have some potential, Keon Zeiss made some really good videos breaking down all of the ideas in that. And then there's also this theory that when Tyler goes to face off against Nico, what if he becomes a bishop because they're missing one right now they're at eight because keons had died so what if tyler goes and to complete the cycle or to maybe break the cycle he joins them and he becomes the kind bishop that they're missing <laughs> having something like tyler becoming a bishop and being somebody that other people can go to something like that would be breaking the cycle without giving us a clean ending there are also theories that maybe this entire story isn't real at all and it's all made up in clancy's head because he's trying to cope with 
whatever. On June 14th, the band goes to the Vessel album on streaming services and added live versions of Guns For Hands and Trees to Vessel, which for one thing, it's weird to go back and change something that's been out for a decade. But also people notice things within these posts. I didn't listen to these when they were posted, but I saw people saying that in Guns For Hands, Tyler starts off the song by saying, I hope you're not done because I'm not. And in Trees, he says, we've got one more thing for you. So both of these songs could be hinting that there's more to the story. Because why would you go and add something like that to this random album on a random day. They didn't say anything about it without it meaning something. And the addition of these two songs to Vessel also meant that every album that they have out besides Skilled and Icy is at 14 songs, if we're including both versions of The Craving. And then on June 17th, we finally get some official activity again. They're finally giving us something. They ignored us for all of early June, but now they're active again. And we see this through the Blurry Face account on Twitter. They deleted their only post, which was the announcement of the Skilled and Icy album. And they typically only use this account when something big is happening, so automatically everybody's on high alert. And along with deleting this post, they also unliked a tweet that they had liked back in 2021 that had pieced together the meaning of level concern and the theory about the bishops. And this was the only tweet that the account had liked, which at the time confirmed the theory, but now it's gone. And that brings us to June 18th, which was one of the possible dates for things to go down, and also it's Josh's birthday. But instead of banned action, this day was kind of entirely led by the fans. It took a couple weeks, but those digital remains from earlier, people finally started to look at them again because why would the band just put this out for nothing? And they started to notice some connections between the images. The Discord click found out that the digital remains can be pieced together as a big puzzle because there are certain shadows that are so harsh or so overbearing on certain pictures and you realize that they line up perfectly with other ones. And people thought maybe this is going to be a timeline of the music video, the Paladin Straight music video, or that there could be a secret message that tells us what to do next or gives us another hint about the story. It could be anything at this point because there's 121 pictures to try and piece together. And they worked for hours on this. I was watching live streams of people piecing it together and there's so many images all over the screen. People are trying to make any connections that they can. After a while of puzzle solving, there were more people trying to say, well, actually, because they all follow a similar theme, they're all promoting the same album, so they have the same colors and they're gonna have the same harsh shadows, it's possible we're just making connections out of something that isn't even there. Most of these pictures could go together, but what is it giving us? <laughs> but one of the first things that people seemed to put together that actually made sense and actually lined up was the combination of slides 103, 37, 83, and 25. Oh sweet beloved 25, who means so much to us. 103 is an image of Josh sitting at his drums and the bottom of the 21 Pilots logo is cut off, but the top of the symbol is cut off on page 37, so those two can go together top and bottom, and then both 83 and 37 piece together with image 25 pretty perfectly. Also around this time, they removed both of the live audios from the Vessel album. It was only up for a couple of days, they didn't say anything about it, and then they took it down without another word. And some people were reminded of that line in Snapback, fooled you once, it's been 25 times, because what if they're fooling us 25 times and then they're gonna do something? Which I have no clue what those 25 times are. I don't know what people were thinking of or how many times they thought had been before this or were still coming, but it is a thought that people were having. And then that brings us to June 20th, which there's a lot here, it moves kind of fast. Because to start, Blurry Face Twitter changed their header to the initial images that had been pieced together, those four that seemed to make the most sense. And the header also on the other side had two arrows going in a circle with the line right in front of your eyes, which is from one of the songs, but it also kind of seems like it's mocking us. But it's true, the answer had been right in front of our eyes for weeks when they released the digital remains back in May and we were only just figuring it out. And you start to wonder if maybe their promise of early June was only because they thought we would figure it out sooner and we just held ourselves back by not solving it. We're getting all frustrated that they're not giving it to us, but really they were waiting for us. One of the people that had been live streaming solving the puzzle was Keon Zeese, the person that I mentioned earlier with that whole other theory. They had been live streaming the puzzle and they tweeted about the live stream and the blurry face official account responded with I saw. And we're assuming this means that they saw the puzzle live stream, which would make sense because they see we solved it and then activity starts up. And again, that makes it so special, involving the fan accounts in the official lore and the official activity of the band. It makes everybody feel like they're in on something rather than watching it. The Blurry Face Twitter account then posts a 17 second video with a screen that says DMA restricted content. And when you reverse the audio that's playing over it, you hear the so few, so proud, so emotional that we had gotten from the end of Paladin Straight with Morse code that seems to spell out pages. And the screen also has a violation code of 103. 
1.37, which if you know anything about the violation codes and how we use them, then you know where that's going. And after a couple of hours, they deleted both this video and the I saw comment. But this violation code, as with the ones that we got way back in the beginning when we were first getting the Clancy letters, if you remember, in order to get to the website that has the letters, you had to get to a screen that had a violation code at the bottom. If you plug that violation code into a URL that we were given, you would get to the letters. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take this violation code and we're going to put it in where that same one went all those years ago and we're going to get to a website that asks for a password. And the answer for what the password is comes from the header that they had changed on the Twitter account. Because if you take those two arrows that are going in a circle and you put it over the image and then consider what number of the digital remains each of the images is, that's how you get the password. The 103.37 was the violation code, but it's also the number of the images. So Josh on the drums is 103, 37 is the one under that. So the same thing if we're going from bottom to top with where the arrow is pointing, then you get 83 and 25. Final password is 8325, which people look that up as an angel number, and apparently it means time to bounce back, which could be a coincidence, but what are the chances? But what do I know? Maybe somebody changed what it means on the website to fit the lore. <laughs> Either way, you put the password into the website, and you're brought to a trailer for the Paladin Straight music video. The trailer is 3 minutes and 28 seconds long, which is obviously shorter than the actual song, but it's cutting between desaturated scenes of Tyler singing and then screens of the restricted content page that we had seen earlier on the Twitter account. Now the violation code is changed to say 8325. We see Tyler dressing up in the overcompensate style Clancy outfit at a bandito camp. We can see a bishop using a vulture in the air to monitor what the banditos are doing. And we see a battle between the banditos and the citizens of Dima. Again, we're only seeing glimpses of all of this before the restricted screen comes up and blocks out what's happening. And every time theorists try to repost this, either to comment on it or just to share it with other people, the band started to copyright and take down all of the videos, which normally they try to encourage everybody to be talking about it and to be theorizing. That's kind of a big thing that they're doing, but now they don't want this video coming out in any other way besides the form that it's in. And at this point, the general theory was still that the music video or something bigger was going to come out on the 25th, which was only a couple days away. Because normally you get a teaser, you get a couple days to hype it up, and then the actual thing is released. But the very next day, on June 21st, at 6 a.m., the band announced that the Paladin Straight music video is going to come out at 3 p.m. And the same way that they talk about the album as just being the album rather than the full-length album, they talk about this song and video as the 13th track rather than the final song. And then also, just for fun, just because it does this sometimes, <laughs> the Blurry Face Twitter blocked at least six different fan accounts, but then they were unblocked a little bit later. And they also changed the header of that account back to black. And then that brings us to 3 p.m., the release of the Paladin Straight music video, which we had been waiting for for a month at this point. The video opens by flying over some bones or some antlers, but people notice that the bones overlap in a way that kind of looks like how their symbol does when you do it with your fingers. And we see Tyler sitting on that same cliff that we saw in the placeholder, but now we get to actually go to his front. Also, before we get any farther, the music video is a minute shorter than the song, but we watch as Tyler picks up the antlers that he's had in the other music videos and he's carving them as little weapons. He's getting ready for whatever's coming. Josh and three other banditos come up behind him with a big box that reminded a lot of people of what they had done in the Craving music video. Not Jenna's version, but the one that has an actual music video with it. It has similar carvings in all of it, which if we're thinking about what that music video is, how they spend all of these hours working on something and then they present it to somebody who immediately brushes it aside and says it's not that good. Is it trying to symbolize the same thing here about how people are so quick to disregard this album. Tyler goes up to open the box and as he opens it, the video transitions to him back at the bandito camp with everybody walking around. He takes out the Clancy outfit, which is why I'm kind of saying what if this is symbolic of how people are so quick to brush aside Clancy because they spent so long on it and then the pirate people can just say it's not that great. And they're talking about how the success of the album isn't as good as people were expecting. He gets dressed in the Clancy outfit out of the box and he got the red tape and everybody is gathering around him to look at a map that he pulls out of Dima and of Trench. Tyler and Josh or Clancy and the Torchbearer lead this group of banditos and we pan up to see that vultures are flying above them and we see that these vultures are being controlled by bishops. In the trailer we saw only one bishop using his power but now we can see all seven bishops. Seven because Keons is dead and Nico is elsewhere but all seven bishops are using their power to watch over what's happening. Everyone is looking over to Dima in the distance and then the bishops do something that we've never really seen before. They all come together and they send a big lightning strike of electricity of power down to the neon gravestones that surround the city. Enter zombies. In the past, whenever we've seen the bishops controlling something, they try to make it look like that person is normal. Like looking back to the scales on Icy Livestream, they tried to dress up the presenters so that they look 
alive and then obviously they're decaying as the show is going on and you can kind of see through that but they're they're done with that they're done hiding they're done pretending they're controlling these people that are very clearly dead they've just crawled out of the ground and they're making no effort to hide it. And there's really big contrast between these two sides because the zombies are using artificial neon lights as weapons while the banditos are relying on natural torchlight. And then we get a face-off between the banditos and the bishops through the people that have given their lives. But Clancy just keeps on walking. He is unbothered. He is not being fought. He's not fighting back. He's got somewhere to be. He heads off into a cave that has yellow flowers beside it and it's kind of a final sign of hope before everything that happens. And it also reminded me of all of his previous attempts to escape because every Time he would try to leave Dima, he would come back with one yellow flower. And to me, seeing this patch of flowers here, it's like, what if that's as far as his escape got? Or what if that's the patch that he had gotten a flower from every time he left? He runs down through the tunnels of Dima, which we've seen before when the banditos were trying to escape and trying to get Tyler out. And he quite literally climbs up a bishop tower. He climbs up the outside of it. And the reason that this video is an entire minute shorter is because it goes straight to the ukulele ending with Clancy up in the tower, facing off with all of the bishops. Like we said before, he is quite literally narrating what's happening. On the ground are banditos fighting while I find Nico, even though I'm past the point of no return. He does the similar motion to what he did back when he sees Keons in the outside music video, but he's wiping out all of the bishops. They all fall. And we don't really know how long this effect is going to be, if he killed them or if he just brought them down for now. It doesn't really, it doesn't dwell on that. But because he did this, all of the vessels that had been controlled are fallen too. Nico literally flies at him and grabs his throat. Tyler drops the antlers and closes his eyes and it kind of looks like he's giving in like he did all of this but once he's face to face with the enemy he just can't do it nico says the so few so proud so emotional and then before the video ends tyler opens his eyes and he looks directly into the eyes of nico in all of the other encounters we've seen tyler seems afraid he closes his eyes he braces himself for whatever is coming next but this time he's facing it head on and if we think back to the concert performances there was a part in the live show where he would take this black paint and he would put it on his neck and he would put it on his hands and people were kind of confused like if that's what represents the insecurity and what represents all these bad things why would you do that to yourself but now it seems like maybe it was all practice like he was slowly building his strength so that when it happens for real he can actually withstand it and then there's a sound at the very end of the song which some people said sounds like the end of the mulberry street live stream version and in the end of that live stream version there's a voice that says there was a wonderful structure to the city that put my cares to rest the responsibilities of the day seem to be accomplished with minimal effort which is a line from the first clancy letter and it's hard to tell for sure if that's the same sound but it would be really interesting if it was because if they're referencing the letters in the paladin video and there's also this morse code that says pages which we never even addressed maybe there's something more hidden within the clancy letters and then there are lots of little details to notice throughout the music video that i didn't really talk about but people are making theories based on that so for example people notice that tyler isn't the only one dressed up as clancy there are some other people in the background that have the mask and they have the red so maybe they're acting as a diversion so that clancy can get away without being attacked during the battle and some people also said that they think dima as a city just looks different which I can't say that I see much of a change, but I like the idea that the reason the city looks different is because it's all in his head, so it's going to morph over time. Like, Dima is representing this mental space, so it's not a fully solid structure that has to stay exactly how it is. And then as for the lyrics, just really fast, I saw someone saying how the song is written as if it's a letter, like from Clancy, rather than one of their usual songs. They had pointed out how the way that Clancy letters are written tell a story kind of as it's happening, but also going back to memories and how this song dances between present and future tense, how in the verses he'll say he's present tense, he's making his way, but then in the chorus he sings, I would swim the paladin straight as if he's not actually doing it. And then at the end, we get Tyler directly narrating the events of the encounter, and then it stops. We get the visuals that go along with the music, but we're still left on this cliffhanger. As with all of these videos, I'm gonna try my best to link some paladin theories and just overall theory accounts that are posting content that's relevant to this topic. Because I love the community that I'm watching here, the community that's all invested in this storyline. There are so many people that are all boosting each other up at the same time. And I will say just my own opinion, I think the song pairs so perfectly with the music video because it all feels so dramatic and it's so tense and it's just the perfect climax for everything. The way the song progresses 
this feels like you're slowly getting closer to something giant. And then it finally happens, but it still doesn't feel resolved. And then after posting the music video, Tyler tweets out, see you at the show, which leads people to think that we might not be getting a resolution to the story until the live shows, until the concerts, which wouldn't make any sense for storytelling because for one thing, does that mean that they're going to have the same conclusion every single night or is it going to change based on the location because otherwise you're going to spoil the entire ending on the first night of the concert and then you still have a year and a half where people already know what happens <laughs> unless you made some desperate attempt to ban recording so that everybody has an original experience when they go but that's just not at all practical but also when he says see you at the show he linked a website to go buy concert tickets but the image that's on that link isn't the regular album cover in the regular album cover there's fire all along the right side of it but in the link there's a lot less yellow and people notice that if you take the image from the link and flip it upside down and then fit it in it does fit in with the fire from the actual album looking at it from a new perspective makes it fit in but does it mean anything i don't know it's a random detail to change for seemingly no reason and on june 22nd tyler responds to somebody questioning whether or not things will be resolved at the show because that's a pretty valid concern from all of us at the time and he responds by saying that the show is a flashback like an entire life passing by reminding us why we fight before we do and that's great for the current worries of people thinking that maybe it's going to be resolved at the live shows and that means that it's all gonna play out every single night but that brings a whole new set of concerns because if this is a flashback before the final battle when is the final battle hmm if the entire show is a flashback we've kind of already addressed that this live show is going to go back through all of their older music but he's confirming it's going to bring us through all the different eras that led us to this moment which means that the final battle isn't happening until after the clancy tour is over because right now they have tour dates scheduled out until May 2025. We were all pretty ready for the end at this point. They had been hyping it up for so long, saying that this is the final battle, this is where it all ends, which if that concert ends May 2025, we're still looking at a 625. It's just June 2025 instead of June 25th, 2024. <laughs> and then one month after the release of Clancy on June 24th, 21 Pilots posted a tweet to appreciate the intimate show that they had done on the launch day because they had done a series of intimate shows leading up to the album's release and they were hoping that everybody is rested in time for tour. The tweet just happens to be 25 words. And also on the 21st, to promote the Paladin Straight video, they posted with the line, climb the top of the tower, which is six words. These tweets bring us up to June 25th. So if the 25th is significant for that date, then it's almost time. So June 25th, the day that we have been waiting for for an entire month. The day came and went and nothing changed. It was pretty discouraging because people were excited for an end and because nothing came out there, it kind of solidifies that it's going to be another year before we get anything. We all got back into this interest, we were fully invested because this is something that a lot of us have grown up with and now it just kind of fell short and now we're gonna have to wait even longer. And it feels like a year long wait between all of this buildup and then the actual end would just get rid of a lot of the impact. This isn't like the hiatus a decade ago where they went full radio silent and then came back even stronger. This is something that they had been hyping up as the end. And because of that, I keep wondering if the 25 that we're seeing isn't meant to be a literal date like the 25th or 2025, 25 days from that point. I'm wondering if maybe we're just not thinking about this number the right way and it means something else. Because it is disappointing to think that it's going to be another year before we get the end of this story. And I'm currently recording this on July 3rd. It feels like everything has kind of died out. There are a lot of theories that are very cool, like how March to the Sea, if you play it over the Paladin Straight music video, it lines up with a lot of the events that happen, or how the lyrics of Clear line up with the music video story. And then you have some people that are getting a little bit too unhinged and trying to make connections where there definitely should not be, but somehow they're making it work. All I'm saying is the band better keep feeding us little hints or else we're either going to slowly drift away to the point of none of us caring anymore, or we're going to completely lose our minds trying to figure out what comes next. And then I wanted to finish this video by talking just a little bit more about the songs now that they've been out for some time. I had a little bit longer to think about them because before it was kind of my initial reactions, but now I've been listening for a month, so I have some more thoughts on them. Currently, Snapback and Oldie Station are moving their way up purely because of what I relate to. I feel like my favorite songs from this album are the ones that I can relate to the most. And then the, the three singles that came out first are so low because I listened to them so much when they were first released that now I'm just sick of listening to them. And I think visually, probably Snapback, Vignette, and Routines in the Night are some of my favorites. And I could end this video by breaking down each of the music videos and the lyrics with specific moments that could mean different things, but I just 
don't have the brain power to try and dig out meanings from music videos that seem so simple on the surface. We could talk about how Routines in the Night sings about doors and how there is that blue door that's in the Clancy letters and that's in the tour but isn't really mentioned in any of the other songs. How Navigating and Snapback reference how it's been so long, which feels very similar to when he says in Chlorine that he's so sorry, let me catch you up to speed. Also in Snapback he says he's running from a thing that he kicked in 17, which at first I thought it said at 17, but saw some people talking about how it says in 17 as in 2017 as in the end of Blurry Face when he washed off the paint. Obviously there's that 25 times line. <laughs> how if you listen closely to Oldie Station it seems like Tyler is yelling for his daughter Rosie in the background of You're in the Crowd at her first dance recital, which is so sweet. Or how Snapback seems to reference parts of every album that they've had out because the harmonies feel very pre-blurry face specifically the harmonies the second time that he sings it's a backslide that whole section feels very pre-blurry face he says he kicked something in 17 which is referencing the blurry face album oh it's you well welcome back to the show feels very trench and it also has that trench level of self-awareness by referencing another song title in it by saying backslide i love that song so much because it feels like everything all wrapped up into one and then the last thing that i wanted to talk Talk about is just what if this actually is the end and I know it's very strongly suggested that this isn't the end because he asked does it sound like it and it obviously ends on a cliffhanger and they hyped it up so much as being the final album but Trench was so lore heavy so it wouldn't really make sense for this to be the end of that story because this has very little to do with the lore unless they chose to take a very literal approach to ending it all but I just can't stop thinking about what if this is it and the more I think about it the more it kind of almost starts to make sense. Weirdly enough, I think I would be okay with it. It would just- I, I don't think it's gonna happen, but it would be so interesting if they just fully commit to ending it there. To have the final scene where Tyler is facing off against Nico, they show that he's strong enough to look it in the eyes, and that's the end. And you don't know who wins, you don't know if there's gonna be a final fight, it's just- that's it. We know that he went from being afraid and from wanting to fight back but not being able to and trying to escape but always getting caught back in the cycle to now for the first time he's able to stand up for himself, he's able to fight back and we don't know how it goes but we know that it can happen. Tyler coming face to face with everything that's been plaguing him and just kind of leaving it ambiguous, I think that would be so cool and that would be such a bold decision and it would make so many people mad but I can't stop thinking about what if that is it. There's still chapter 25 and there's still the extra sound that's at the end of Paladin and the whole idea of the concert being a flashback before a final battle. I don't think it is the end, I'm not saying that that's what my thought is, but I'm thinking it would be such a bold move if they did that. And I wish I had more to talk about but that's kind of where we're at right now. There is something on Twitter that people saw where there's an account called The Only Band in the World that seems to be 21 Pilots themed. It's got the tape on it and it's got the symbol. They only have one tweet up and it says there's no reason for you to write music unless there's something for you to reveal. It has a little video that says April 2015 and they have a website where they ask for your email and a countdown for a little over three days. The 21 Pilots updaters Twitter account posted about it and said there might be something here but also be cautious just signing up or something randomly because we don't even know if this is 21 Pilots affiliated or if this is just some random fan made thing. We're kind of just gonna have to wait and see if anything comes from that because the band hasn't said anything about it so it's ugh. it could be a cool cryptic thing that they're doing that they're just hoping fans will catch on to or it could be something that has nothing to do with them and somebody is just taking advantage of the fact that they do like to do stuff like that. But that's it, that's where we're at. We talked about the release of the album, the digital remains, Paladin straight music video went the whole cliffhanger there and the mystery of of Clancy Ultimate Chapter 25. I feel like right now everybody is pretty solid on the idea of 2025 for the meaning of 25 because all of the other dates have passed but I really hope that they at least give us something between now and then because otherwise I'm really worried that a lot of us are going to lose interest and it's just gonna it's not gonna hit where it should. Tour does start in less than two months so hopefully something is gonna come from that. We'll wait and see what it brings us. Are there any hints and details that I missed? Is there anything that you're still confused about or anything that you have theories on? Please share your wildest thoughts. That's all I got so I'll see you around. Bye!